Okay, just want to read from Philippians 4, right, before we pray. Philippians 4 um, says, uh, 4 and verse 6, be anxious for nothing. Okay. So should we read further or uh, stop there only? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just like love your enemies. This is also another equally, uh, I think, something on those lines, right? Um, so it says, um, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, which means everything. Uh, okay, let's just read that verse. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay, um, So it says, be anxious for nothing, which means all the... All the circumstances, all the situations, all the conversations, all our uh, possible, um, uh, you know, uh, things, challenges that can potent that have the potential to create anxiety. Okay, so all that. So Paul is saying, be anxious for nothing. Okay, but in everything, which means all these things, which could potentially create anxiety or which have been creating anxiety okay so in but in everything uh, what does he say by prayer and supplication okay by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god so so instead of responding with anxiety with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving okay so that's something that um, that's a switch we need to make right? every time it's a natural response to feel anxiety, right? It's a natural response. When we see something that is not going our way, that is not happening according to plan, that's not happening according to the timeline we set, you know, that's not happening uh, according to, you know, the perfect way in which we imagined. The, the body's response is anxiety, right? We are physically, we, we feel anxiety. Our heart rate goes up. Our breathing increases, and uh, we start sweating, maybe, and uh, our, you know, blood pressure goes up, and we feel anxiety. It's a physiological response, right, to the circumstance. Um, but Paul says, but in everything, in all those times, with prayer and supplication. So just lift it up to God, make your requests known to God, and he says, with thanksgiving, make it known to God. Okay, uh, and then. He says in verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But this peace of God guarding our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus is dependent on what? Is dependent on our lifting up in supplication and prayer. Whenever we feel that anxiety, whenever we feel those anxious moments, with thanksgiving to God. Okay, thanksgiving because he's able to solve. He's all able to change. He's able to transform. And for various reasons, we can give thanksgiving. That we can give thanks to God, right? So um, just want to remind us and myself that that's a switch that all of us need to make in order to experience this peace of God, which is, you know, when we say peace of God or love of God, we're talking about something that he has something that he has within himself that sources from god and he is extending to us you know the kind of peace that he has unshakable you know in all circumstances that that kind of peace that he has and the peace of god will which surpasses all understanding which goes beyond reason logic you know or everything will guard our hearts and minds you know it's like a watchman a uh, security guard uh, will guard our hearts and minds, but this needs to become something, something habitual, something a life of a lifestyle, right? So let's pray and say, Lord, um, you know, uh, I want to make that switch in my life. Every time I sense anxiety, I want to make it a prayer. I want to lift it up as a supplication with thanksgiving. Yeah. So maybe this morning we feel some anxiety about something. Can we just lift it up to God and say, Lord, um, I, I bring it before you as a supplication, as a, as a request. And uh, I thank you uh, because you're able, you know, you hear, 
and uh, and scripture says you know when we know that we that god hears us we will have those things that he is um, you know that um, he is actually uh, we are making a request of right so let's let's pray father we we just bring before you this morning oh god all those things that uh, potentially create anxiety and uh, everything that causes worry lord causes us to worry lord we we bring that to you father god and as your word as you have instructed lord we with supplication and thanksgiving we make our request known to you with supplication and thanksgiving yes god with thanksgiving because you are well able to take care of all our needs according to your riches in glory with thanksgiving because you are the one who is all powerful all knowing with thanksgiving because you lord you promise and you know don't go back on your word and lord with thanksgiving because oh god lord in you are good and in you lord there is you are light and in you there is no darkness at all and no shadow of lord even a variation of changing father god we thanksgiving because lord you are the one who is yesterday today and forever the same oh father god yes lord your word remains oh father god heaven and earth will pass away oh god but your word remains lord and so god based on that foundation on that rock which never moves oh god we come and we give thanks oh father god we pray that each one of us lord will be recipients of that peace oh god of that supernatural peace which goes beyond our human understanding oh god your peace oh father god the peace of god lord that it will guard our hearts and minds lord guard our hearts and minds father god yes lord so that our imaginations our thoughts our actions and everything that flows from our thoughts and our hearts god lord will be lord god honoring oh god will be righteous choices righteous decisions father god yes master we thank you lord we thank you we give you all the praise at this time we give you all the glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay um good morning again to those who joined us uh, right now online okay so uh today um we are looking at the call of uh, the preacher right i think that's where we stopped last class the call uh, of the preacher we saw that um well we are all, each one of us is called so there's no one without the call of god because we are called as disciples to go share the gospel uh to preach to every creature you know every nation Uh, we are called to do that right so um the the challenge for us is to really find out what is our metron or the sphere of influence that god has called us to okay so um, so that is what we are looking at so so it's important we know that uh, you know especially in evangelical circles you know uh, if you're you know if, if you're someone who has come through okay children church youth and then youth camp and all that the the, the most often repeated question or heard question is how do i know god's will okay and it could be mostly it could be on the you know maybe about career and those big things right big decisions so maybe people have reached that point in life and then everybody is asking like okay how do i know god's will how do i know god's will and if it's a youth camp it's normally about you know some person that they are seeing and they are considering you know choice of life partner whatever it's mostly that you know how do i know god's will how and because i remember for me the first time i asked how do i go know god's will was about that you know and nothing after before that i never you know <laughs> i never even bothered about god's will i just you know i was just happy uh, doing what i wanted to do. but then when it came to this i was like oh i need to find out god's will so yeah so god's will and we are talking about you know uh, about our call of god and uh, the will of god uh, for us to serve in whatever area etc right so the thing is this that um, it, yes we need to take time and um, it's not just one event right it is it is a lifestyle right and uh, knowing god's will it's not like once we know okay god this is what you've called me to do and then we step in and then we forget about it no that various points in life at various crossroads in life and we need to know you know and i think on a on a day to day basis right we need to know the will of god heart of god so rather than you know all the formula combinations you know x plus y is equal to z and then doing that uh, we know that it's a walk of intimacy with god 
like we we know that we will find ourselves walking in the will of god as we hear god's voice on a daily basis and as we obey or uh, fulfill you know his instructions on a daily basis and we will find ourselves walking in the plan in the will in the purposes of god okay so is it uh, complicated is it complex no you know because we are all created we are all designed to hear the voice of god uh, it becomes complicated when you know when we when we have our own will or maybe we are walking in rebellion and uh, maybe we are you know we we just give in to the things of the flesh and uh, we are holding on to that and not willing to die to the flesh uh, it becomes a struggle right otherwise uh, knowing and hearing god's voice and fulfilling uh, god's plan and purpose is is natural for the believer okay so um, i just wanted us to um, uh, you know uh, look at a few things that we have uh, maybe considered um, we've looked at maybe in the first semester you know uh, so i just want to share from fulfilling god's purpose um, anyone remembers yeah from fulfilling god's purpose uh, if you recall you know we looked at uh, some nine guide guide posts yeah okay okay let me just quickly um, present that and then we can uh, okay okay um are you able to see um, okay so first of all we recognize the general teaching and instruction of god's word okay that goes without saying because um um 2 timothy 3 16 17 all scripture is god breathed or given by inspiration of god and is profitable for what for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work okay so the general instruction the general principles of god um you know we we need to be aware of and uh, we need to be you know aware agree walk general principles Okay. it could be on various aspects right so i'm not just going to um uh going to the details of it but the general principles uh of god which which look at you know which touch upon every aspect of our lives okay what about the second one recognizing the recognizing the seeds so what does that mean sorry you want to use the mic uh, the talents what god has kept in us okay it could be the talents when you say na talents is the natural abilities that you might have okay then gifts okay uh, talking about spiritual gifts okay what else okay maybe a prophetic word okay mm. okay what else maybe certain you know the certain desires and uh, thoughts that god put in your heart at an early stage right and and we are saying we calling it seed because it keeps growing right from a seed stage it keeps growing so these have been sown in our hearts maybe at a you know very young age and it's it's growing okay so so what are we talking about we are talking about the call of god the will of god and uh, specifically with regard to you know when you say preaching we are talking about communicating the gospel so what sphere of influence you know where and what the specifics of it so god puts these seeds you know in our hearts and uh, i remember once um, like i never felt so that i think that was the first time i just felt so strongly that i needed to do something okay that was uh, i was i was you know, probably 10 years or even less than that and i was at a wedding and this was at a wedding um uh, and uh, and i saw this boy with a small guitar on baby guitar you know at a wedding so he 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 had actually played at the reception um and i saw him with that and the minute i saw that 
I just felt this very strong desire. I need to learn. Okay, I, I, and I don't know. I, I just look. I think I must have looked at my mother with so much conviction. You know, I said, <laughs> I said, I want to learn. Okay, and my mother, she was like, Oh, my son wants to learn. Let me just do everything to get make it possible. So, you know, she got in touch with people, and you know, you know, it's not like we had a lot of money and all, but then. She made sure there was a new guitar bought, and then checked to the school, and you know, put me in guitar class and all that. Then after one year, I I got a little bored. <laughs> you know, the same things, uh, you know, same chords and all that. Then I I was like, I was a little bored. But then I remember I distinctly remember that moment because um, it was uh, for me. I've never felt that strongly before. You know, I said, and I looked at my mother and said, I want to learn this. You know, something stirred within me. So, simple things like that, and I remember also uh, once just talking to and also meeting with one, you know, one friend who was uh, who was into ministry, right? He was, used to preach and share share the word and all that. Uh, so when I heard him share the word, I don't know. Suddenly, I just felt that hey, I want to do the same thing. I want to do the same thing. I want to share share the word. Okay, and uh, uh, and I would say, oh yes, I, I don't know, you know, I was not a believer, first of all, mm -hmm. but in my heart there's a desire. I want to do what he's doing. Okay, and there's, you know, going back, I remember my mother sharing that uh, when I was a, mm, when I was an infant. Okay, so I must have been maybe a few months old, maybe two months old or something, and they used to take me to uh, uh, a chapel. Uh, this was in a place called Madurai. So they, they used to take me to chapel. And my mother prayed, saying, you know, she looked at someone who came and uh, shared the word or read the word. Okay. And my mother prayed, Lord, one day my son should be doing that. Okay. So uh, she saw that and it was a simple prayer, you know. So I don't know. These were seeds in my life. Okay. Which at certain points in my life, it was like there was a drawing, there was a pull towards that. So it's good to identify what are the seeds you know, that are sown in our lives. You know? What are those dreams that you had? What are those defining moments? You know, you felt that, hey, I need to do something. And it was, it was actually, we didn't even realize it, but it was God actually drawing, pulling us right, into his plan and purpose. Okay. So biblical examples, we see Joseph, Moses, um, David, you know, the anointing that they had at the early age. Okay, so third one, recognizing the stirring within. I think it's it's in line with the seed, um, you know, that so you feel a desire, uh, you feel a stirring within to do something. And the thing is, at that age, maybe we compare with others. Do you also want to, are you also interested? You know, uh, no, and then we just ditch it. Right, because at that age we want that ear approval, okay. right? We and not many of us, you know. Maybe there are a few of us who are so this thing, you know. It's okay, even if you don't like it. This is what I'm I'm going for, because most of us, you know, we finish 10th standard. Okay, which group are you taking? Maths and science. Okay, I'll also take maths and science. <laughs> right, we make our decisions based on that, right? Uh, um, so we want that peer approval and every, what everybody everybody's doing, etc. But then, you know, uh, recognize that, okay, what is that stirring? Especially when we look at Nehemiah's life, not everybody was feeling that same way. Not everybody was feeling that burden. But when he heard the news that the gates uh, and the walls of Jerusalem were broken down, he it was an in, intense reaction. He wept, he fasted, he prayed for many days. He mourned, it says he mourned for many days, right? So because of those seeds that are placed in us, there could be a stirring within us when we encounter certain things, when we see certain things. You know, that is that is again, you know, uh, the stirring that God puts in our heart, uh, the Spirit of God draws. Okay, recognize the grace, fourth one. Recognize the grace of God given to you. Okay, so what is the grace? When we look at the grace of God, of course, divine favor. It's about divine character and also divine enablement. Right. So, what is the grace that is given in in your life? Um, some things to consider: the gifts in our life 
point to the grace that is given to us right uh, that is a divine enablement that is given to us the gifts that god has placed in our lives um and the gifts that given to us are also in line with the function okay i uh, i think you can just you can check the screen if you are i'm just sharing that then also um yes it could be uh, uh, the gifts of god which which need not be all spiritual gifts right it could be certain things that are um it could be you know what we don't consider as spiritual you know i know 1 corinthians 12 we are familiar with that list and we know these are the gifts of the spirit um but we look at romans 12 right we see that that also is a list and which has compassion which has generosity which has leadership also right so uh we we may not really consider them to be spiritual gifts okay but but the fact is this that these are gifts or membership gifts that uh, god has given us and so that also indicates to the grace that is upon our life okay then fifth one recognize the leading of god's spirit okay so how is god's holy spirit how is the holy spirit leading us okay romans 8 verse 14 for as many as led by the spirit of god these are sons of god or sons and daughters of god so uh, to be led by him right uh, am i led by the spirit of god so which means that uh, i need to understand or sharpen my spirit uh, sharpen my hearing right to to hear the voice of god okay i need to do whatever it takes to build myself in the inner man right and put to death the things of the flesh uh, because it's interfering uh, with uh, me hearing clearly from god okay so uh, you know it, it, it's it's of course when we give in to the things of the flesh we are you know we are displeasing god holy spirit is grieved etc but the greater damage is that all these fleshly lusts war against the things of the soul what we see in first peter and also it interferes or blocks our destiny or it sometimes uh, delays us stepping into certain things that god has for us because it's again a struggle uh, it's a, it's creates a lot of confusion in hearing clearly what god has for us right so um, in wanting to recognize or in walking with the uh, re- recognition of god's spirit uh, we need to really sharpen our hearing okay um okay 1 corinthians 2 verse 9 uh, verses 9 and 10 um i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them to us through his spirit okay and the holy spirit of course he is sovereign he reveals them first and primary primarily through his word to our hearts to our spirit right and of course he will use circumstances if you are not you know if you are not really receiving it in our spirit he will use circumstances he will use other means as well to confirm those things that he puts in our hearts like sovereign things like even dreams and visions and so on right okay um so yeah so we know how the holy spirit speaks to us you know bears witness with our spirit um quickens the written word the spoken word comes in the form of ideas impressions pictures dreams visions prophetic words etc so um for us to uh, intentionally you know focus on this you know how can i sharpen my hearing how can i really grow strong spiritually you know right? uh, praying praying in the spirit praying in tongues um and uh, not only that but also obeying the voice of god okay uh, because if we are not obeying uh, if you're not following through um then then what's the point right god shows us god reveals his heart but we are still in that same place right so we need to uh, step into obeying as well okay uh sixth one recognize the circumstances okay recognize the circumstances which means that when god organizes divinely or orchestrates the circumstances um let's be quick to recognize it or let's be sensitive to recognize it okay um maybe 
people places um things around us events around us um god just shifts things orchestrates but we need to be careful to recognize it you know well does it mean that okay once if i blow it you know in the sense once if i miss that that's it the doors are closed forever i can't you know it's just that it causes a delay you know god being god he will cause uh, i believe you know it's my opinion that god will cause another way to come in you know to the call you know because that's what happened to me right now i delayed because of so many things i was entrenched in and so many strongholds so many addictions uh which i was in as a believer so much so that god had to you know give me that time i had to make the choice you know uh, so uh, so it kind of delayed me stepping into uh, a level of fullness that he wanted me to step into right so uh, so god does orchestrate circumstances events he positions people places um, so we need to discern and uh, respond okay uh, what else recognize godly counsel and wisdom okay god speaks through people sometimes through through our very you know uh, people whom we don't even consider right as okay maybe an authoritative voice or whatever you know god gives wisdom through whomever he chooses right so recognize that um counsel wisdom um advice yeah. okay so again not going to getting in details recognize the times and the seasons very important right god speaks ahead of time god speaks well ahead of time and say okay this is what i've called you to do this is what i'm called you to b right um but uh, don't step in ahead of time or don't continue to you know wait but step in at the right time recognize the time recognize the seasons and um, a- as we walk with god god will shift the season we know that right god as we walk with god uh, god will ensure you know, many times we think okay god i i don't know you know Uh, i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm you know whether i'm in the right place doing the right thing but as we walk with god god will ensure that we step into seasons and he will also you know take us into the next season he will remind us or oh, okay or um, you know talk to us and show us what we need for the next season right uh, as he did with joshua right joshua knew that he was entering into a next season when moses Moses life came to an end right and he was entering into a next season of in terms of serving in terms of uh, responsibility everything was shifting everything had you know dramatically shifted and so god gave him those instructions saying that i will be with you do not fear don't be afraid uh, and then all those instructions of you know this book of law shall not depart from your mouth you will meditate on it and be careful to observe everything that is written on it and then you will have good success right but don't don't be fearful don't be afraid be bold be courageous and so on and he says right as i was with moses so i will be with you you know as you saw you know in your previous season uh, how i function how i interact i will be with you. so god really gives the reassurance and the instructions and the equipping you know as we step into the, the next season right okay okay and recognize again god's pattern of working right so in our lives uh, god does certain things he leads us in certain ways that doesn't mean that he will not surprise us or he will not uh, you know lead us in different ways but you know right he has dealt with you in a certain way and he continues to do that so recognize that okay so um so that's something that we um just a refresher for us about um being sure certain uh, of the call of god okay and uh, you, you know when people ask okay what is it that you're called to do what is your response <laughs> most of the time we say i don't know i i really don't know uh, i'm still waiting okay so so let it be a positive faith response i was like you know god is leading me uh he's showing me i'm waiting on him 
if if that is the case not or you're very sure okay he's called me to be an evangelist and this is what uh, you know i'm preparing um and this is what he is you know or uh, or you just say you know i'm just enjoying god <laughs> good response you know i'm just enjoying god he he op- is opening the door or the doors that he wants me to open kick open certain doors you know yeah i'm just going with god going with god but let it be a faith response you know many times sorry so when this question is asked like uh, what what do you see your purpose or what and we say if the response is are like waiting but the response waiting will be like forever <laughs> for a long time because um, the maybe the magnitude or the bigger picture of what god has for us <clears throat> we might not be able to see at this point of time but we also have this small milestones that we mm. uh you know reach that takes us through yeah that that are ordained by like god mm. and uh, my my question was i mean my thing was when um how do you exactly yeah not that find the purpose of god uh, but uh, and, you know be like that persistent mm. that's a i feel a, a big challenge for me at least at times uh, you know the bigger picture at least a part of the bigger picture mm. not the entire picture what how god is seeing from the top view uh, at least a part maybe the desire shows you the okay this is might be my calling and i walk towards it yeah. then suddenly it takes a turn and it, something else comes into the picture and uh, we might be inclined to some other things mm, mm. so there this confusion i'm okay i thought i for example i thought i'll become a pastor but now i'm doing i'm becoming one evangelist <laughs> So mm, then mm. it comes to another another kind of a mm. uh, thing so mm. being open to it or like how do we channel ourselves uh, however god works mm. not restricting us into this box of okay i'll only become that right 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 i think that see that's the challenge right sometimes we put ourselves in a box put ourselves uh, like we say label ourselves and then kind of find ourselves in you know difficult situations right so the thing is okay uh, when you say okay you this is what god has called uh, you you see you're saying that you know the big picture a part of it, part of it. okay so so the best thing you know uh, the best thing i would say is to say lord you called me to serve you in whatever way you know in whatever function maybe it is a fivefold maybe it is in any other god you called me to save, serve you and you also know that there are times and seasons in the sense there is a season of equipping there is a season of commissioning okay or or gradually stepping into the you know the call of god so as long as you are you know you're mindful of both this both of these things right so just joyfully enjoy the journey with god okay yeah yeah uh, one more thing uh, is um <laughs> so when for example uh, somebody thought they'll become an evangelist i mean we say that where you are anointed there will be a grace there will be grace area. correct yeah like you will be flourishing in that area fruitful in that yes fruitful in that area correct so somebody thought they'll become an evangelist okay. and then it, then eventually uh, it turned out to be they are not uh, they felt that they heard from god they're becoming an evangelist or okay. some circumstances lead to that uh, kind of a okay uh, thing but eventually it turned out to be they recognized they are not how you know some <laughs> 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 no, no the thing is see, okay so okay just two things you know one is also um one is also the fact that okay evangelist you know we have in our minds a picture of an evangelist okay yeah. we have a, in our picture a uh, minor picture of evangelist which is like um, maybe speaking in crusades or you know this big gatherings or whatever uh, evangelist is someone who shares goes around proclaims the gospel of the kingdom and uh, and of course we know the gifts that go with this is uh, accompanied with signs wonders and miracles and so you know the supernatural and everything is part of it so so in what 
uh, capacity on what environment God wants to use us as an evangelist, wants to use a person as an evangelist, uh, that we can leave it to God. And that is something that we can grow into. Okay, that that and that also keeps changing as we journey through. You know, from what we see, right? Um, the God expands the scope of the, our ministry. Okay, so now, um, so you, the person felt okay. One feels that I'm called to be an evangelist. Then question mark is uh, how? How did the person feel? Maybe others said. But the thing is, main thing is, they want, they had this intense desire to share with whomever they met, right? Yeah. Correct. No, yeah. that that is that is what they, whomever they met, they shared, and and that is when the initial stirring and the initial experience. Hey, hey, this is something that I'm called to do. This is something that I want to do. You know, I've shared, and I, I'm able to do this. And yes, when I when I keep sharing, God gives me this word of knowledge, and I'm you know I'm just praying, and then you know there is this uh, you know God uh, maybe this uh, work of healing and everything that's happening, and you know I feel that I'm called for this, okay, and uh, and then you know we, you continue on, and then you're saying the person later finds out that they are called for something else maybe not the fivefold evangelist yeah, yeah. maybe something else yeah. no yeah. problem i mean they'll be disappointed <laughs> i mean i'm not i'm just saying an example yeah they'll be You're disappointed not... because if they had a picture yeah. this is how evangelists should be yeah okay or uh, yeah so they were so convinced that this is you know this is how an evangelist would function and then this is how i should be you know then there is a sense of disappointment Right. That's the one last question. Yeah. So when, uh, because you are a, you are a, uh, working in the ministry of a pastoral role, okay. have you ever during this journey of your pastor role, have you felt okay? Sometimes I don't know if it's making sense. Hmm. Uh, I mean, have you ever felt that okay? What am I doing? Like okay, how long I'm gonna do this for? Hmm. How long? The same thing. You hmm. know, go to go Sunday and then preach and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being attacked now, Lord. Persecution, Lord. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so I can. get your point. I get your you point. You know, so, the, mm. okay, fine. Next word. You know, next word. Okay, I'm I'm preaching mm. and we are impacting. But have you ever felt that? Okay, mm. God, next word. Is there something more? Is there something more? Mm. Is there something more that I should mm. desire or seek? What is more? Yeah. What is that more? It will it will vary, of course. That more uh, because you're talking about the scope of ministry. Etc. You know, so but to answer your question, uh, when I stepped into uh, quote unquote full time ministry as a pastor, it was like stepping into it was like a breath of fresh air. Okay, so never did I regret ev you know not once, except for one phase, one very difficult phase. You know, uh, never did I regret uh, stepping into pastoral ministry. Okay, so there, which means that every morning I'll get up excited for what the day holds, what I can do every morning and every day till today. Okay, there will be challenges, there will be things, but I'll just get up saying, wow, today is the day the Lord has made and that's it. You know, what can I do today? So that's the thing that I wake up with. I, I know it could be different for different people, but temperamentally, that's how I am. Okay, now, uh, do I have questions of God, you know, or let's say, um, uh, do we have time? Yeah. Do I have questions like, uh, God, uh, you know, I need to grow. Do, do I hit plateaus? You know, like certain. Uh, I'm saying, feeling like, I, I think, you know, I've hit a place where I'm not. Yeah, definitely, right. And or I feel, you know, I'm stepping into something and this is not my comfort zone. Oh God, you know. Am I called to do this? Oh God, I'm sitting with this Excel sheet and, <laughs> you know, where I, people are perishing outside. I have those moments that and I think everybody goes through those moments right there are things in your in your calling that you you know you do joy you know you, you you do it and there are certain things that you need to do that comes with the responsibility which you're not comfortable doing and which is not your area of comfort you know those always challenge you okay um, so these questions like am I in the right place uh, am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, you know uh, what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, you'll have those questions. You know, suppose uh, you're sitting and then you're, uh, you know, 
you're filling out some expense sheet and then it's you know, you're doing something some analysis on you know excel sheet and all that and and sometimes you just oh god you know hey, i should just be outside you know sharing i should be yeah but then you realize that this aspect is also part of ministry you know uh, and then you say okay this comes with it maybe i i need to i need to grow into handling this as well right um there are certain things which could be which could come to you naturally you're passionate about um but there are certain other things certain other responsibilities certain other what i would say duties that come with which you which, which actually shape you you don't realize it which actually shape you sharpen you um but and because you need to do those things you begin to question you know am i am i actually called in this you, you have those questions but the thing is to rest in god whatever it is see god speaks we we forget that we forget that god leads we forget that god you know uh, shapes us god takes us through we we give so so little credit to that we think that okay you know it's it's all about me no god will god will the way he has conveyed the way he has led he will he will continue to do that right uh, but personally we might hit those places just to answer that we might hit those places in life uh, you know sometimes is every now and then maybe you feel like okay i should just go somewhere you know you hear some you hear some testimony and you're like ah, i need to go I, i need to go somewhere leave all this and go somewhere you know uh, but then the minute you spend time in his presence the minute you are refreshed in his presence you realize god i know you know you're taking me through i'm in the right place and i'm you know if you're in the right place right so yeah so hope that answered mm-hmm. okay okay so i think we'll stop here um and next class we look at what are the qualifications you know these are the things that we have already know okay but these are very basic things um which just a reiteration of that uh before we step in okay okay thank you we'll stop here okay